the breakfast. The group calls for the cancellation of the presidential and national assembly elections over discrepancies recorded during the elections across the country. We'll look at this in detail. Also on the breakfast, Regulatory Council of Nigeria is set to enforce sanctions on unapproved adverts on secondary digital media platforms from the 1st of March. Kofi? And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's papers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. We have all these ahead on The Breakfast. We're back with The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Nice to have you join us this morning. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Popo, 2nd of March, and it's great to be back on The Breakfast set. Absolutely, mercy. Um, <laughs> uh, we missed the sets, haven't we? <laughs> we have. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> we'll start our, our discussion this morning in a top trending uh, our segment. Of course, yesterday we brought you information news uh, that the uh, we all woke up, you know, to the news that uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission (INEC) had announced uh, Ashiwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu as the winner of the 2023 presidential election. Um, some people complaining that you know that happened while they slept. But um, uh, Bola Tinubu, as you may well know, is the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, the ruling party in Nigeria. Uh, he defeated 17 other candidates who took part in that election. He scored a total uh, of uh, 8 million seven hundred and ninety-four thousand seven hundred and twenty-six votes, the highest of all the candidates in the election, uh, thereby meeting the constitutional requirement. Uh, to be declared, declared winner. One of the constitutional requirements, that is, um, the second requirement he also met, which is his call over 25% of the votes cast in 30 states, more than the 24 states constitutionally uh, required. As you already know, the INEC chairman, Mahmoud Yakubu, who announced uh, the final results on the early, in the early hours of Wednesday in Abuja, said that Tiko Abubakar of the PDP came second in the election, polling 6,900,000. 84,520 votes. Um, Peter B of the Labour Party came third uh, with a total of 6,101,533 votes, while Rabi Okwankwasi of the NNPP came fourth with 1,496,687 votes. INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu, who announced the final results in the early hours of Wednesday, said that Chico Bubakar of the PDP came second. Um, we already talked about that. So, well, that's what you have. Um, I mean, we're already aware of this, but the reactions to this, to what's trending with Nigerians talking about it, um, you know, from from place to place, especially on the social media space um, within and outside the country. Mercy. Well, um, so, I mean, like we rightly stated yesterday, we had this conversation uh, because that's actually happened very. Uh, in the late hours of the night, uh, 3 a.m., that's when it happened, uh, where a lot of Nigerians were asleep. Uh, myself in <laughs> also was really uh, asleep up until when I woke up to that particular news. But the reactions have not ended. A lot of people, uh, what Nigerians are saying is, hey, if you say 30 states um, meeting the requirement of 25% above uh, the constitutional requirement, the people are saying, what happens to the clause? of the FCT. The FCT is it a state that argument has been prior to this election. And those who actually saw it, more like prophets ahead of us, had already, you know, cited this as what's going to be an issue. And the likes of Ulisa uh, Agbakoba, you know, mentioned that as, as a major issue. Now, some people are saying, if you see the reaction, a lot of people are saying, oh, this isn't my president. I think he's looking for something else. He can't carry. Uh, too many persons are just uh, reacting differently. If you see the mood uh, outside, it's, it's not, you know, something that you want to recognize. So there are various uh, thoughts on social media and off social media. Others are saying that mandates have been stolen, the elections have been rigged, and that's not what it is. Uh, we know who our president is. These are some of the thoughts that Nigerians uh, have, you know, held over the time that uh, the APC presidential candidate, who's now the president-elect, has been declared by INEC. I mean, this, this conversation will continue for a very long time. Others are indifferent. They say congratulations to him 
uh, you can say a lot of things. I mean, if you go on the social media space and outside social media space, that's what it is. But uh, several issues are also very important. Uh, people asking, how did he win? So it's okay to say, okay, you have won, but what's the, uh, how did you get to this point? And those who have talked about criminality, groups, uh, organization, individuals, political parties themselves, these are very valid questions. Also looking at the conduct of the elections, Nigerians have complained as to what was uh, promised by the Electoral Act as to the commitment of the president himself. Uh, President Mohamed Buhari, who said he was going to, you know, give Nigerians a free, credible election. He was not going to be involved in all of this. Did he put all the structures where, I mean, did we have all hands on deck, security agencies uh, or security agents or personnel, or however you want to look at it, INEC, did they have their acts together? How were these results transferred? Uh, were they transmitted uh, electronically or these results were transmitted manually. There are a lot of discrepancies and irregularities uh, which a lot of persons have complained about. And this conversation continues. It hasn't ended. I'm sure that we're going to experience that for a very long time up until I, I really don't know when it will fizzle out. But the president himself has also acknowledged that the elections, uh, you know, the Saturday election had a lot of sh uh, flaws or shortcomings. And as such, he's encouraged and said, hey, those who feel very aggrieved by the outcome should approach the court, uh, which is uh, the hope of the common man. But it's the judiciary, really, the hope of the common man. We just move away quickly from that. Another of the top trending is uh, a report that was making the rounds of Wiki Son, who was shot dead or who was shot in the United States. The River State Governor has debunked that claims in social and social media that the son of the Governor Yesom Wiki was shot dead in the United States. Now, uh, the State Commissioner for Information and Communication, Chris Feinborn, reacted to the trending post on social media that Wiki's son was dead or was shot uh, over the Governor's alleged activities in the just concluded presidential and national assembly elections in River State. And now, that's a lot. Even up until this morning, I saw someone posting asking, can someone verify this information? The post was captioned, breaking news, Wiki's only son shot dead in California, U.S. over his father's act in River's election. Uh, but Feinborn, who uh, spokesperson for the government in the state said that the governor does not have a son or any child for that matter in the United States. And he said the post was a handiwork of those who he described as wicked people who were bent on blackmailing and tarnishing the image of the River State governor and urged members of the public to discountenance such reports. Well, that's what it is. Um, nothing, nothing more to admit, basically, Mercy. Um... If you try to move really faster, so it's, it's, he said it, he's um, responded, he's and debunked that. I think that is that. Um, let's move on. Um, the Blue Line Rail infrastructure, Blue Line Rail uh, 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 Transit, you want to call it Blue, sometimes it's confusing. Lagos Blue Rail Mass Transit, that is uh, what we're talking about next. Um, there were reports on... Um, on, on Monday, I believe, was it Monday, um, or yesterday, Tuesday, that um, uh, that, that, that rail uh, project, you know, it's a mass rail transit, that it had been gutted by fire. Um, it's located at the marina axis of Lagos, but of course it runs through different parts of Lagos. Um, this is a very, very, uh, how to call it, signature project of the Lagos state government and one that President Buhari had to come uh, commission himself in January 2023. Uh, so it's a newly inaugurated project, a newly inaugurated uh, rail mass transit, like we well know. Um, and then the reports, I can see the pictures of fire um, destroying a section of that uh, blue rail mass transit in Lagos. Um, it was really sad to hear the fire service um, had to respond quickly uh, to help put out the fire. Uh, it was um, also reported that the Lagos State Metropolitan Area uh, Transportation Agency uh, had to release a statement saying that uh, what happened was that uh, uh, the the uh, the generating set, the generating set there caught caught fire. Also, the police came out um, releasing a statement saying that the generating set there. Uh, caught fire. I think it was a police public relations officer 
um, in Lagos State, um, Benjamin Hundei, who put out a statement saying that um, it was a generator that caught fire over there. Okay. In fact, news websites and social media blogs uh, published a story earlier yesterday. Um, but the Lagos State government later came out to refute that report, you know, that uh, the blue, rail, blue Line Rail went up in flames. They came out to debunk the report, refute it. And um, this caused uh, some news websites to take down their, their, their posts regarding this. In fact, there's one I clicked uh, before we came on, on the air and I didn't see the post there again. Um, so the, the thing is, the pictures we saw, um, were, they, were they lies? Well, the um, media aid, social media aid, or new media aid to the state governor, uh, Babajine Saolo, his name is Jibril uh, Gawat. He went on Twitter yesterday evening to say that a man of a Lagos state uh, fire service contained it properly. So what do, we t what do we take? Is it that there was no fire at all? Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, or is it that there was a fire? Well, what they're saying is that there was a fire, um, but it was not on the rail line, is exactly. what they're saying. Okay. Exactly. That there was a fire, but it was not on the rail line. Mm. Um, and that um, the men of the Lagos State Fire Service and others contained it properly. And there was a video of uh, that fire incident that he put up uh, showing the fire service officers, um, you know, putting out the inferno. But the interesting part, and I don't know if we can show the pictures, um, Lagos State Metropolitan Area Fire Service um, on, on Twitter, they put out a picture of um, Lagosians using the, the train. And I think this may be, um, uh -huh, here we have it, that's good. This may be on, uh, not unconnected with that uh, fire incident. Maybe just to show you know, that the, the, the rail line is still working. There's nothing, you know, to, to complain about this. Um, you can see the tweet. That's the tweet I'm referring to. Uh, it says, today, more than 300 Lagosians from all walks of life converged on the marina station of the Lagos Rail Mass Transit uh, Blue Line for a ride on the new rail line. It says the experience is bound to linger in the minds of those who participated in the test ride. Yeah, we know, but we know what they're doing. You know, it's, um, <laughs> it's election period. Um, the governorship election is up next. This is a signature project of the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Samolu. It is something that he, he um, holds in pride. This is one of the things that he will be uh, campaigning on to tell the Lagos State, see, you have to vote for me, because after how many years, I'm the one who gave you a train, a rail line, okay, a, a metropolitan rail line. Um, so this, this wasn't good, and they had to put something out just to make sure people know the lines, the rail lines themselves are not affected. It was a generating house, a generating set. That was affected. So, so this Interest, um, interesting times. You would yes, say. Uh, but, but you know this particular report had had been you know around the time where Nigerians had taken to the street or about the time where the results were still being announced. Don't forget the election happened on Saturday, and we still have the result uh, being you know the coalition center Sunday, Monday up until yesterday. So. Uh, prior to this time, this you know this incident had happened, and I saw a lot of people trying to verify the incident. But however, just like you had mentioned, it wasn't you know the real uh, line or that was affected. But the fire incident happened around it, uh, you know, close to it, and that was exactly what uh, happened. It's a good one that the government has actually put out, you know, that information. Um, stating the uh, real thing that happened or what actually transpired. However, it is important that uh, we also look out for government infrastructure. I mean, we live in a climate where it's very just, it's almost natural for people to uh, take to destroying public property and what have you. But that's the size of it on the top trending. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be joining our guest, Ezekiel Nyai, took this morning for Off the Press. Please stay with us. Good morning.